Hello and welcome to the What Country Is podcast with Sarah Pearson. I am Sarah Pearson. I am the host of this podcast. I have no hosts, so this is going to be a little bit awkward for me as I, sorry, I'm very distracted. There is a huge thunderstorm outside of my apartment. Um, when I moved to Memphis, I didn't realize that there was going to be so much weather. I just assumed that if you lived in the South, you got one season and one weather type for the whole year, and that is summer. Or at least, this is basically New York summer. You get all of the seasons. <laughs> so maybe I was wrong. Maybe you just get a New York summer all year round in Memphis. I've only been here a month, so I guess I'll find out. Today we are talking about something that has piqued my interest in the last week, which was the Grammys. You know, country music does all right at the Grammys. I think they only showed one category this year as far as Grammy nom like categories go. Uh, and it was, I want to say it was the best album of the year. And we're gonna get all we're gonna get into it. So uh, I'm not going to stress too much about giving you the details about what they aired. But I do believe they only aired uh, the best country album of the year. So about the Grammys. I think uh, it should be said that the nominations that I did research on and, you know, what I thought. I'm just going to say that they're not what I expected and the winners are also not what I expected. And so uh, let's just, I just want to talk about a little bit what happened at the Grammys. <laughs> um, for best song, we had uh, Bluebird by Miranda Lambert, which is a great song. I've done a cover it. I've done a cover of it. Jeez, it's really early. <laughs> Uh, I've done a cover of it. It's on my Instagram. Go check it out. Um, the Bones by Baron Morris, which is not a country song. Uh, More Hearts Than Mine by Ingrid Andres. I don't know how to say her last name. And Andres. Um, it's an okay country song. This would not have been my first pick to be a nomination at the Grammys for country music's best song. And then Some People Do by Old Dominion. I have a soft spot for Old Dominion. Not really country in the traditional sense, but they make pretty good pop country, and I enjoy it. So this song, again, not my first choice for the Grammy's Best Song of the Year nomination, but it's okay. I, I could be okay with it. And then the one that won was Crowded Table by The High Women. And let me tell you, I can't get behind the high women. I really wanted to. I thought there were going to be, like, killer harmonies, like a uh, The Chicks type of deal. Or, you know, maybe even more, like, retro than that. Just, like, a really tight harmony group. I, that's not what they are. <laughs> and I was disappointed. And I'm not too familiar with the highway men that they were trying to emulate I guess in this type of band formation but I, I you know I'm assuming they all also sang the melody line and you know did that and I'm sure it was very popular and according to the Grammys this is also very popular uh because it won best song I listened to it I had never heard it and so I was like okay why is this the best song and I listened to it and it is still I still don't like it <laughs> so uh congratulations to the high women it's hard to say <laughs> I don't know why uh the the high women it includes a bunch of songwriters out of Nashville and Marin Morris which I thought was very strange I was like how did all these people connect and who thought of this idea it's very interesting to me but, you know, congratulations to the high women. I, uh, I'm i glad that you have found success in the country music scene as, 
And I, I like it. I appreciate it because it is a, a group of songwriters and Mary Norris. But um, it, it just, it's nice to see songwriters out there performing and, and doing really well at awards. Not just winning awards for their songs, but winning awards for their performances. Best album, um, as I mentioned, was shown and aired on television. Um, and the nominees, again, were just kind of odd. But maybe I just didn't maybe I just didn't listen to a lot of country music in the last the last year. Um it was a very stressful year. <laughs> 2020 was not the easiest year for anyone. Um so you know, I don't blame anyone for not actually actively going to seek out new things. I basically stayed home and just listened to listen to all of my comfort music, which was um a handful of country music from 2014 when I was in my prime at 16 <laughs> and then like Disney. So and like alternative pop I don't know what you would call five seconds of summer, but that is my guilty pleasure. <laughs> and so uh, I didn't listen to a lot of new country music. I'm trying this year to be better. You can check out my reviews of the new country music that I'm listening to on my YouTube channel, on my blog at... Oh, what was that? Oh, it's a cat toy. I, for the viewers that are the listeners that are just listening to the audio version of this um there is a cat behind me there is going to be a video version on youtube of this but there is a cat behind me his name is cole i don't know how many of you actually know me in in real life um but i do have a cat his name's cole he's back there so okay back to the best <laughs> album rewards uh so the, the nominations were a little strange um but i'm gonna just read them to you uh, so the first one is Ladylike by Ingrid Andres. I can't, Andres? I, I should have really looked it up. Um, or maybe I spelled it wrong on my notes. It looks okay. Um, but I didn't listen to that album, so I don't know if it's good. I'm basing it off of her single that was nominated for Best Song. And mm, if it was Best Song uh, if of the year, <laughs> um... I'm assuming that I probably won't like the album. Um, the next one is Your Life is a Record by Brandy Clark. And it was okay. I wasn't in love with it. I listened to a few songs. I probably should have listened to the whole album. But, you know, I don't have the time anymore. I'm listening to all kinds of new stuff from just this month, March. Um, the next one was Nightfall by Little Big Town. And... I didn't listen to this at all. I, I like Little Big Town, and I think it would have been good if I had listened to it. But I just, you know, I, I didn't even listen to the songs after I found out the nominations. I just assumed it would be good. So I'm, I'm surprised, but Little Big Town, you know, I think they've seen their success, and now it is, like, dipping. Um as newer country artists are coming about in the country music scene. And, you know, I'm just not, like, in love. I've never been in love with Little Big Town. Like, I like everyone else, like Boondocks and some of their other bigger hits, but I've never sat down with a Little Big Town album and been like, yes, this is my jam. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that... You know, I saw something once and it was like, Maroon 5 is no one's favorite band. And I, I take that personally because at one point they were my favorite band. <laughs> um, but that's like the little big town. You know, they exist and they make good music, but they're nobody's favorite band. And so, you know, anyway, but little big town. So they're nominated. And then uh, Never Will by Ashley McBride. I did not listen to this full album. I do like what Ashley McBride is doing. Like, I think she's doing a lot of great stuff for women in country music. Um, and so I was actually, I'm 
for the amount that she's rising, I'm surprised that she didn't win because she's a great like songwriter and she's a great singer and she's got really clever songs, which I appreciate. Um, but the winner of this category was Miranda Lambert with Wild Card, which featured um, Bluebird on it. And I really, I think I enjoyed this probably the most. So I'm not surprised that it won at all. I, I thought it was a really good album. And I just, you know, I, I like Miranda Lambert. There was a point in my life where I didn't like Miranda Lambert because I thought she was a mean person. Um, I went to a concert once and she, like, there were, like, beach balls flying around. And I get it because I'm a performer. And she just kind of, like, took them and popped them. And I was like, listen, we're at a summer concert in New York. And we, you know, that's what just happens. It happens at all the concerts. It happens. There's a, a high school that uses that venue as, like, a for graduation ceremonies and it happens at graduation ceremonies so like I just don't see you know the big deal but maybe you know maybe she was having a bad day I don't I don't understand it <laughs> but you know I liked her album I, I she's grown on me she put out um these like singles or something single type things um where she was like singing in the desert or the field. I don't know. I saw a little bit of a video. I listened to it. She did Tin Man and then another song with a guy that I don't can't think of the name of right now. And it was beautiful. Like her performance at the Grammys was not that great. Um, you know, as like most TV performances are, they're pretty subpar. But her performance out in the, you know, grasslands or wherever she was was phenomenal and I you know I could not get over how you know how good it sounded just to like be out in nature and have like the natural reverber <laughs> the natural reverberance um that nature can have and it was just beautiful and had like the wind blowing and the fire crackling and I thought it was really nice and I, I'm gonna do probably a more deep dive into you know those singles as a review on my youtube channel and or on my blog so you should probably go check it out sarahpearson.com or sarah pearson on youtube <laughs> the last thing i wanted to talk about in regards to the gremes is mickey guyton guyton i believe i'm saying it correctly um she i mean i've known about her for many years I want to say since 2014 um but for those who don't know her she is mm, one of the only black female art artists in country music um I'm gonna go as far to say she is one of the only black artists in country music there's a few there's like you know Darius Rucker and Jamie Allen I think that's his name um, but she is actually a really, I mean, like, if you're just gonna generalize, she's a great country artist, like, not, she's not, you know, it doesn't, she's not special because she's black, she's special because she makes great country music, um, but, I mean, along with that, she is black, and she has paved her way in country music, and I, I think she did a great thing at the Grammys. She did perform, I don't know, I want to say it was at the ACM Awards, maybe? The ACM Awards? That she sang a song and Keith Urban was playing piano, which I thought was very strange when I watched it. Um, <clears throat> and she she did a great job. I think she was pregnant. Um but she she has a phenomenal voice and I think that was like the start of her like declaration that I'm gonna fix country music or like I'm gonna make it more inclusive and I'm gonna talk with my you know talk directly to my black brothers and sisters and tell them you know this you know we're all together we're all one and we can make it through um 
But, you know, I can't relate to it. I've never been black. I never will be. And, you know, the conversation of race in music has always frustrated me because, you know, historically, us white people have been trying to sound black forever. (laughs) So our country music is just the white people soul music. And I don't see why, you know, having a actual black person jump in and, you know, really take over this kind of, you know, beautiful genre that I love and make it their own. Um, As long as they're keeping to tradition and keep, not keeping to tradition, but keeping within the genre that they're in. So like, I don't, I don't necessarily like when anyone um, comes in and tries to, you know, stir up country music. It's like, I don't go into pop and stir up pop music, or I don't go into, you know, R&B and rap and, and stir up, you know, that. I don't, I don't like it when people come in and they're just like, oh, I'm just here to mess with it. And that's kind of what a bunch of like crossover artists have been doing recently which is just coming in and you know making a an R&B song and with like a a fiddle or a pedal steel and calling it country and i it just frustrates me cuz it's just that's not it it can be a sub genre of R&B or a sub genre of rap or whatever but it's it's not country um and so that is kind of my frustration with that but um back to mickey guy guyton back to mickey guyton um she sang her single black like me at the grammys and it started a media frenzy of you know mixed reviews so most of it was extremely positive and you know To be honest, I don't think there was much negative. I'm going to talk only about the positive because I think it is a huge positive for country music. Um, She is the first... I'm sorry, I just want to make sure I get it right, so I'm looking at my notes. Um, She is the first black female solo artist to be nominated in a country category. That is huge. I, I mean, country is a hard genre to break through in um I mean I would say even more than like any other genre just because we are so stuck in the same five white men for every award show like every I I did a whole blog post about it about entertainer of the year uh for the ACM awards and it's is five white dudes like it is the same five white dudes every year some variation of a white dude is getting nominated for the ace like for entertainer of the year and you know i was super impressed that these nominations at the grammys were very heavily uh, female um so like for best song of the year there is one two three four four women or women groups um, in Best Song of the Year, and there was one male group. And then for Best Album of the Year, it's all women except for, like, Little Big Town, which is, you know, 50% women. (laughs) And so I was genuinely impressed with the nominations this year at the Grammys. Not thoroughly impressed (laughs) with the uh, ACM Awards nominations when it comes to, you know, diversity. But we're getting there. And, you know, Mickey Guyton is the one of the first to really pave that way to making country music more inclusive. Um, I, you know, I have my issues with Mickey Guyton in, in the sense that she's straying further away from the country sound that I prefer. But, you know, I don't... I think country music is just constantly, you know, reinventing itself, which is not a bad thing, but it's not, you know, the the further you stray away from the genre, the less you are 
a part of the genre and if they want to be pop artists so like there are many that have done this that have started in country and become pop artists taylor swift is one of the most famous examples but there are others uh like dan and shay who actually have really a good first album um but a good first country album it's kind of more like beachy and california-y i would say but um but the stuff they make now is not country at all (laughs) like um and and many artists and i think and i don't know if this is up to her um and maybe she actually you know wants to stay country but her you know her label or whoever her manager wants her to go in this pop route so she can be more popular like you know, I've done some, you know, research about Thomas Rhett. Okay. I have seen him. He's definitely one of those that goes from, you know, country, bro country. Okay. We're not going to give him too much credit. Bro country to pop. And he's trying to go back, but his success after he was charting on the pop charts for a little while is crazy. He's got millions of followers on all different kinds of platforms he's got a bunch of streams way more than you know a chris stapleton and so making that jump into pop definitely is financially better for them and in turn financially better for their labels and their you know their staff and it just kind of it irks me that you know country artists are making that jump for more fame, more money. It just, you know, they are not exactly the, the the artists that I like. You know, I like the the Chris Stapletons that have, you know, it's like 500k followers. Yeah, that's a lot, but that is not com- like anything compared to Luke Bryan's like 5 billion or whatever it is. Okay, 5 billion is a little bit much, but like it's in the millions. And, you know, it's just it is not something that I, you know, you know I'm very frustrated. Um, but Mickey Guyton is, I think, a, an incredible country artist. She has a very incredible country. Uh, she has an incredible voice for country. And she has released some stuff that I have adored. Like, I, to be honest, I'm very picky and I don't add things to my playlist if I don't think they are good or at least I they're you know I would listen to them again but um she has an EP I said it like I don't know what an EP is (laughs) she has um an EP I think it's an EP I, I said it like that because I don't really know but I think it's an EP and it's an acoustic EP and it's called Unbreakable and it's from 2014 and it is so good it is true blue country music and her voice on it sounds amazing and i don't i don't think that she's going in that direction anymore i mean she has i mean she's released songs since 2014 but since then i don't think they are as country as they could be with her beautiful voice as you know, as this 2014 release. Um, And I am very happy that she is shaking the norm of country music being the first black solo, like first black female solo artist to be even nominated in the category. And I think one day that she will win. I think next year she probably will win (laughs) after this performance. People, I mean, she's going to skyrocket to fame. I just don't think she's going to be country anymore, which is really sad because she's great. Um, But her song, Black Like Me, is kind of, it's not kind of, it is an anthem for all black people, but especially the country fan. Um, It's, not only is it, you know, an anthem and a, 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 when I first listened to it, I thought this song isn't for me. Like, not in my, it's not in my, like, how do I explain this? This song was not made for me, I originally thought. 
and then I kept listening to it. I watched her performance and I said, no, it, it is for people like me. It's for everyone. <laughs> it, you know, it teaches you, she has a great line, um, in it that is, it's, I want to say it's like, uh, if you think this is the land of the free, you should try being black like me. And I thought that was, uh, that was kind of like at the pinnacle of the song. I thought it was, it kind of gave me chills. And I, as I mentioned, I'll never understand what it's like. But this song kind of gave me a, a, a better insight into what it's like. Um, and it's tough because you want to be able to understand and you never will be. But as far as country music goes, I have a better understanding of what um, black people are going through at least in the country music industry um and i think that she's gonna have way more success in the near future as she continues to put out really good music hopefully leaning more towards country because i would appreciate it um and i will probably listen to it far more than i would listen to the pop music that she has been producing. I'm sorry that it got deep because I, I this is trying to be a light hearted thing, but I have a lot of opinions that I want to talk about. And it just feels like recently a lot of the controversial stuff has been based around race and I don't like it. I am not a fan of, you know, exclusion obviously, but, um, yeah. So that was this week's podcast. That was weird. I, I was not expecting to get this way, but, um, thank you guys for listening to my podcast this week. I hope you had a wonderful Friday. I am going to spend the rest of my day chilling out in the thunderstorm. You know, I'm really excited about this thing. I we don't get thunderstorms where I'm from, you know, and it's just really exciting. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I will be in your ears uh, next Friday with a new topic of discussion. This episode got a little deep, more deep than I, I wanted to go, but I think these are conversations that need to be had about country music, so I don't mind getting into them. Um, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear what kind of topics I should do. So if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment below, like, and subscribe, you know, the whole jazz. But if you're listening to this on, you know, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, in Apple Podcasts, if you could leave a, a review or a rating, I would really appreciate it. It will boost my, you know, all my good stuff. And yeah, I, I enjoyed talking with you this morning. And I hope you have a wonderful Friday. Uh, and I will see you. Well, I won't see you. I mean, I'm used to making YouTube videos. I will talk to you. Yeah, I'll talk to you next Friday. Have a great, great week, guys. Bye. Bye.